Um, so good morning. Let's see. Hi, Miss Heidi. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing really well. Yeah, I'm excited. And the more I see come on, the more excited I get. Um, and, and of course, the more we get, the more that we can share. Kim Dooley, that magnificent Clinton office. Mike's out there. Miss Rachel, is that my new mama, Rachel? Or is that a different Rachel? That's a Rachel different Rachel. Rachel. No, you're not new mama, Rachel. Nope. <laughs> but she's one of our, Rachel is one of our newest mentors out of that fabulous growing Belleville office. Uh, last number I heard is they've record, recruited 13 new agents this year. Oh, good job. 13. And we have a lot of new agents coming in. Definitely. So yeah, Rachel uh, joined us about a year ago and uh, it has gone through the program, worked with a wonderful mentor, James Morgan, who is also co-manager there um, and uh, said, yeah, I'll, I'll play. So she's one of our great new folks that's out there. Well, hey, I am showing us a, just a little bit past the hour of 11 o'clock. And the way that we always start these is with let's share some good news. So guys, this is the time to take yourself off and just go. Kim, you've got it. I see that hand excitedly waving. You're still muted, dear. Okay, now you can hear me. Good Lord. Good morning, everybody. How is everybody today? Um, so I have um, one mentee and then I have another gal that I'm working with here at the office who's also brand new. And we were all at Hard Knocks together and we have made sure that even if we can't be in the office together, we are making those calls consistently every week. And one of my, well, actually both of my mentees, um, one of them just took a for sale by owner, flipped it and turned it into a listing. Uh, just got that on the market about three or four days ago. Yay! Yay. Um, and then um, one of my other gals that we've been working with, um, same situation. She's been pounding away at the phones and she's actually got a couple of um, showings or um, appointments that she's made. So um, it really has made a difference being accountable to one another with that. And I know that that was one of the things that my gals, well, and even myself, it's one of those things that they struggled with, you know. Um, so good, good things all the way around for that. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Who else has got some good shares, some good stuff that you've run into? I do. Shelly, Shelly from that fabulous Port Huron office. Hi. So I have a mentee. His name is Jason, and Hard Knocks really turned him around. Um, he listed a FISBO. He is getting ready to list a expired. He's already had wow. a closing. Um, he's, he's like four and a half months old. He's He's rocking it. He's going on another listing appointment tomorrow, which I'm going to be going with him in Lapeer. Um, he is doing absolutely phenomenal, and he always puts it towards the hard knocks class. And wow. and I I was really really impressed the way he came out of there. I and I always told him I said you know my first year coaching with it was um, Rick Mendez I believe it was um, that I sat in front of. And he rocked me out my very first year. So to see him do what I could, what I did, I'm so proud of this guy. I just, I'm overwhelmed. He's doing phenomenal. Well, and I know Shelly is one of those, let me hit you right between the eyes. Thanks, um, Darwin. I love you too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, okay, let's see. How do I put this more politically correct? She is not afraid to have fierce conversations with her mentees. Um, and, and frankly, 
it's that aspect of caring enough to have those fierce conversations. And, and I know that this is probably, uh, he's probably one of the best that she's had. And it's, it's great to hear that that was a wake up for them. I, I got to tell you, we all learned uh, so much from the hard knocks and the hard knocks format, what that did. And now it's like, let's bring that uh, back into the office, which Karina, thankfully, I'm, I'm glad that you're here because I want you to share. Um, we're, we're doing the, the good news, the great shares. Um, and you sent me that video with Becca. Can you share a little bit about what came about? Or, or you know, Probably not everybody saw that video, so maybe let's share the whole story. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so first of all, a few weeks ago, Darwin had our coming to Jesus meeting at my office <laughs> with our mentors and mentees, kind of like, what do we need to do? How do we spur this on to make it work a little bit better? And one of the subject was about mentees coming to the office and mentors too. Um, I personally don't come into the office every day. Um, I never have. I always had the philosophy that, you know, I come into the office when I need to be there and uh, I'm out selling real estate. So, um, but when you're first starting, you have to cut your teeth on who am I working with? How do I listen to these conversations that these agents are having? So that was touched on by Darwin. And he just said, how often do you come in? And, and, you know, what are you learning when you are here? And Rebecca said, I don't come in as much as I should. I did at first. And when she first was coming in, she had um, a buyer, she had a listing appointment, she had another buyer. So she was working, then life happened and she was home more. So fast forward, uh, she came into the office uh, last week and she uh, had a closing on Friday and then she turned in her closing on Monday. She was in the office all day. She got a call from one of her postcards that she sent out earlier this year from her sphere asking her to do a CMA. So she has a listing appointment with them. And then she also was walking out the door two days ago, and somebody came in and wanted to know about a condo that uh, was listed and she was on floor. So yeah. he, uh, she was out by her car. And this is another tribute to our admin. Dee, Dee went outside and said to uh, Becca, hey, this guy wants some information. He's out by his car. She literally went to him at his car and said, I hear you want to see a condo. She took him to the condo, safety first, not in her book. <laughs> she drove with him alone to a vacant condo, showed the condo, wrote an offer the next morning. It got accepted today. Awesome. I know she is on top of the world. So excited. And the kicker is the condo is, a, it's actually a co-op. And she was asking me, how do, how do we do co-ops? I've never done a co-op, 27, 28 years, I've never done a co-op. So now she's learning all about how to do a co-op with an agent that the listing agent is like the queen of co-op. And uh, so she can teach me now about co-op. So mentors can learn and mentees oh, can learn. Sure, sure, for sure, for sure. Absolutely, that's great. Great, great job. Yeah, um, it, you know, so who else? There, there's got to be some other great stories that are out there. Uh, I, I know the impact that I would like, not had. Um, I would like to share. So this is Rachel uh -huh. Vasquez. I have a mentee, Montoya Maddox. She's about yeah. two months in. And um, she's been calling people, FISBOs, expireds. We've been doing that every week. Tuesdays and Thursdays. And she recently got a Zillow lead from Jessica, our broker. And I went with her to show a house and they were kind of not interested, kind of blown her off. They weren't getting approved. She finally got them approved and they got approved for 400,000. So I'm so excited for her. Yeah. So finally got a buyer. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Absolutely awesome. Who else has got some good stuff out there? I have a shout out. Let's hear it. Hear me. 
So I just wanted to give a shout out to Liz Bice, who is on her first, I believe, mentor coaching meeting. She was one of the mentees that started in our office and she's doing phenomenal and has been added to, as a mentor. Awesome. I was going to say, I, it's like, you know, if we're doing everything right, I get notified about it first, but I see Liz is on here. So Liz, welcome. Uh, any Anything you want to share with anybody? Thank you, Caroline. Um, I don't have a mentee yet, but I'm really excited to be able to help somebody because I was helped out a lot and given a lot of um, self-confidence and a lot of you can do this and I want to do that for somebody else. Hi, Liz. I'm glad Hi. you're here. Hi. Sorry, Sean. Darwin. <laughs> oh, you're, hey, no, listen, that's what this is about. Um, there's so many great individuals that, you know, here's Rachel and Liz just getting started again to, uh, I shouldn't say again, but getting started as a mentor um, to Hutch, who's been one of the original mentors to Karina, who's your volume this year, Karina, you're going to be at what level? Oh, you're still muted right there. Uh, probably about 10. Wow. So, right, right. Um, to <laughs> Stephanie, who started out with me as an agent, uh, went through the struggle bus phase, um, made her a mentor, and then she really got committed and signed on with Alex. So, you know, share a little bit about yours. You know, I think, I was I the first mentee to graduate? I think I was the first one. I, you know what, that's a very good possibility. I think office. It, it started up when I was just, we were in the other building, I think. Um, yeah, it's been a great, it's been a great process and I'm loving it. And boy, it was sure helpful to me to have somebody, I had um, Jessica Barco, she's no longer with us at the time, but boy, she was sure a great mentor. And it was super helpful for me to go through the program. So now I know what to do. And now I have two mentees and I'm loving it. They're awesome, awesome. and I'm excited for them. Well, I, I wanna bring one other one in, Jamie Snap. Uh, Jamie, if you're available to where you can talk. Um, yeah. Because would you share everybody a little bit of your history? Um, well, I, uh, real estate wise, I started about two years ago with Keller Williams in the Novi area. I worked with the Perna team and, um, I'm originally from the Saginaw area. So my significant other and I moved back here and I joined on with, uh, Coldwell Banker Professionals in Midland. And how, how is it for you? Uh, now having to suffer with Lisa Wiltsey. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> suffering at all. I love Lisa. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's awesome. And I, I just wanted to say welcome aboard to you because also somebody else who hadn't started with us. Um, I think I saw Alana on here. Alana, are you still with me? Nope. I think Alana had, she dropped off here. Uh, Alana is another one who uh, joined us uh, from another company um, and just saw some great things from from Hard Knocks. So let's I, I just I want to make this meeting for you guys um, a best practice, and maybe I'm I'm hoping something um, within the last we'll call it couple of months uh, best practice something that's definitely working with you maybe it's something that you've done different um because of hard knocks uh who's got something for us there yep kim go ahead you know i have to agree with karina um especially here in my office we have a lot of agents that have been in the business for 30 plus years and so especially for new people coming in, I mean, I think I survived my first year, even before we had mentors from just being a sponge and asking a lot of questions. I mean, I'm blessed. I, 
the people that were here were very nice to me and, and gave me a lot of information. But I think especially for new people coming in, I think they need to make that commitment to be in the office just so they can absorb things. And then again, I think the thing with, with our office that's made a big difference is to have that accountability and making you know, an agreement. Okay, we're going to be here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and this is what we're going to tackle those two days. If nothing else, I think it really, really makes a huge difference. And and I agree with Karina. I mean, being here, um, you learn things that you don't even know that you're going to learn. And I think it gives you that accountability factor as well. Hey, Kim, I want to just expound upon that. Um, one of the things that I did that Dar Darwin's meeting with us again back at, you know, at our office that made me think I felt like I was underserving my mentee because my first mentee was April Todd. And if any of you know April, she, her bills, her volume will, will be above mine this year. And there's nothing, there's no better feeling as a mentee or a mentor than when your mentee does better than you. That's yep. my mission. So yep. I asked her, I mean, that was eight years ago before this program, but she was still, I mentored her. Um, I asked her, what was the one thing that she would say helped her the most in the business? And she said, your door was always open and not like, oh, you can come and ask me anything, anytime you want. Your physical door to your office was always open. Even when you had an appointment or a meeting or a conversation you were having with a a call in or one of your past clients, your past customers. You <laughs> the door and she said, everybody else always closed the door for privacy, but I learned from listening to your calls. Yep. So then I, I thought, agree. well, that's probably what everybody needs to hear is how do we co-op? How do we talk to people? And that's what we want them to do. Absolutely. I agree with you hundred, 110%. I, I will throw out that whenever I've been managing I have had the open door. I mean, Hutch and, and Steph and, and many of you. Yeah, Cheryl, my, my door was open. And as I've always said, one of the best reasons to be in the office is because you never know when the impromptu learning opportunity is going to pop up. And it could be simply because my door was open as I'm talking with a, a buyer, a seller, might have been mine or someone else's, but there's verbiage, there's dialogue, there's understanding, uh, all of that that can come out. So I think all of us need to know that we can do that and we need to do that for our mentees. So like, gosh, if Karina was in the office 40 hours a week, Karina wouldn't be doing $10 million in production, right? So we, we do know and understand that, um, but I can tell you, I, I wish uh, uh, that Lisa Nicole was on here with us right now because she's like the ever ready bunny. Um, and I, I believe Lisa, correct me if I, I'm wrong on this, but she'll actually make her mentee run around with her for the first day oh, yeah. or two. Absolutely, yep. yeah. And it, it's like, let me show you what this is going to be like. Now, it might be, uh, well, with Nicole, I'll probably, I haven't seen her in operation, but hanging out with her, it's probably organized chaos. Uh, but it, fair statement, okay, because the only reason I say that is I know myself. But for people to be able to see that or to see how you do what you do that you're giving them your time and, and you're doing 5 million, you're doing 10 million, you're doing whatever the production is that you're doing and how you do that. The, the whole key, I, I think is give them everything that you can, but let them see when you're just doing business. They're observing you, they're listening to you, they're gonna learn but I think one of the, the kindest things that we can do is to be parental. And if it means grab them by the ear and pull them into the office, so be it, right? There you go. Thank you, Val. <laughs> Darwin? But, yep, go ahead. Can I, I, I want to make a statement, but I also have a question for all of the mentors, if you, if you don't mind. Um, first of all, yes, you had an open door policy. 
yes, being in the office and learning by osmosis, the one thing that stood out to me was listening to you and you had no idea I was listening and we might have discussed this before. You are your scripts. So you, what you, the information you give us at like boot camps and all of the things you actually practice because I sat there and listened to you and went, oh, wow, that wasn't so hard. Um, and that open door policy is huge. And that is how I learned. And it did take me a few years to get going. And then especially when I started coaching with Alex and then my business went, did so, so much better. Um, so my question though is, is I have a new mentee who works full-time. She has another full-time job. So I can get her in the evenings for now. She cannot come into the office unless she takes a day off of her work, which every now and then she can do. But I mean, we Zoomed last night for an hour and a half, which is great. And I walked her through a few things, uh, but for her schedule, it's, it's gonna be a little more difficult. She's very excited and she's very proactive and she's already doing great things. However, she is not going to be able to be in the office to listen. How how can I best help her? I've got my answers, but let's throw it out to the group. That's why we're here. I, because I'm sure all of us have had to deal with, um, we'll politically correctly call them dual career agents, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would hope that if we've brought somebody in who's dual career it is not because they want to treat it as a hobby, but we've brought them in because they want to be in real estate, okay? So if we have that individual, then they're, they should be committed. So what do we do with a committed dual career agent? Kim, you're on. So, and again, this is piggybacking on everything everybody else has said, but um, I, if I know that I have some, because I do, I have, I have a couple right now um, that have full-time jobs. If I know I'm going to meet with somebody in the evening, I usually know the day before I'll call and I'll say, listen, I'm meeting with a client. Why don't you come with me? Or if we do an open house on Saturday, I know in advance having an open house, come with me and we'll do it together. I always kind of use that premise of we're going to do it together um, so they don't feel like, oh my God, I got to do this all by myself. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, and so I take those opportunities when I know I have things in the evening or on the weekends to grab hold of somebody and drag them with me. Um, one of the best things right there, that nails it. I, yes, we need to show them how to do what they've been taught. So again, uh, reminding you of those four steps. Tell them how, show them how, watch them do it. And then we coach them to the highest level possible of which really it's just steps two and three that we as mentors are responsible. It's showing and observing. Let them come along as much as you can on all of your stuff so that you have to show less of what they've learned. So I think that's a, a, a real key. I like that a lot. And again, they need to be committed. We just got to remember that, hey, I just set this appointment. And oh, don't ask. Tell them, I just set this appointment at 6.30 tomorrow. Put it in your calendar. Meet me at the office or meet me or meet me there. Meet me around the corner. But tell them because rookies, it's high directive. We can't give them options. We need to tell them this is what you need to do. So that would be a great one. I love it. Uh, who else has got something for Stephanie on working and leading a dual career person? Ah, it's tough, isn't it? So one of the things I'm going to tell you, work with your manager. Um, let's a matter of fact, I, so managers, I'm sorry, but uh, you should accept the person whom you're being given. So uh, that, that leads to a couple of things, but 
manager says, I have this individual, they should be telling you who the individual is. And let's make sure that that individual is actually committed to making money. So typically, we're not going to bring in somebody who wants to be a part timer, uh, if if we or or making a little bit of money. But you know, Larry. Uh, by the way, Hutch, this is my Larry. He's he's my Hutch here in Rochester. So, um, <laughs> but. Uh, I brought uh, a gal on who she's like, well, I'd like to make about $10,000. Not, not a lot, right? But she's been in America for 10 years. She is uh, Chinese, if I remember right, Larry. And uh, she earned her master's degree when she got here to America. Why? It was a great way for her to learn the language better. Um she passed the exam on her first try. She did that uh, in a self-paced learning. So there were all of these positive things. And oh, by the way, she works at the school. She's there until 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, so there's bottom line was, is there were all these pluses, but there were all these negatives too. She didn't really meet all of my standards to say, sure, come on board. And oh, by the way, she wasn't going to pick up the phone. I, I, not going to happen, right? Well, I went to Larry and I said, hey, I've got Amanda. This is the circumstances. Would you work with her knowing that this is what's going on? Um, if, if I didn't have him or if he hadn't, Val, uh, I wouldn't have hired her. I wouldn't have brought her in. But now the key is, is we know that's what's there. And what we need to work with as managers and mentor is that she is going to be passively active. And we've got to find a way to work <coughs> with her. And we now know, okay, well, we've got to do our weekly meetings with her uh, one day during the week after 2.30 in the afternoon. So that's a key. Um, Make sure they're committed. Still meet with them weekly. Do it on the time frame that's convenient for you. It's best if we can meet them in the office. If we can't, I would Zoom them. But that weekly meeting, and, and by the way, mentors, you can hold we managers accountable. You guys don't get compensated unless if these people make money. Be fierce. Are they doing the work? And if they're not, Larry could come to me and say, uh, Amanda's not doing work. Val can come to Brenda or I and go, this uh, Ming or uh, Makiko or this Amanda or Laura they can come to me and go, look, here's where I've been at two weeks. They haven't met with me and they're doing no report. They're not taking any action. It's time for Brenda and I to sit down and have a fierce conversation because it's not just the accountability. It's the consequences. And where I'm going to start out at is really quite simple. It's where was it that you wanted to go? How much money did you want to make? And, and what is it that you're hoping for? How are your, how is your lack of action moving you toward that? Because see, it's not about us, but if we help them get what they want, then as a company, as mentors, we're going to have everything that we want because we're giving of our time because somebody else gave it back to us. Besides that, if you're a mentor, more than likely you're, you're somebody who just wants to give in return. Let, let me give, I'll get more back from it than I ever will financially. But at the same point, remember that part. It's okay to remind them of why they got in this business. So if we do that, that's the biggest part. So 
let me throw out one thing again. High directive. Take away the option. They don't need the options. Don't listen to me on this. And I'm talking to somebody in particular sitting next to Val. Earmuffs. They need to be told what to do. They need to be told what to do and they need to be held accountable to their own goals. So I, I would also then throw this out, Steph, I, I, and there's so much that we can go in on this particular one. And by the way, all of these are the same, whether they're full-time or part-time, but even more important for the part-time dual career person is that aspect of accountability, high directive. But if they're not giving you a full effort, they shouldn't be in the business. They, they, they're, yeah, I can, I, I have trouble saying this, but I also believe that it's gotta be said, I don't know that they deserve our time. If we're going to give more than they are going to give, and you don't get compensated, um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. there was one other thing. Oh, goal projector. You need to know their why, their dreams, which calculate to how much money do they need to make which calculates to how many deals do they need to close, which brings it down to the approximate number of appointments that they need to go on per week. So I want you to think of that. And if you don't know what that is for your mentees, it would be the number one thing I would have you do. If we don't know that, you can't have that conversation that I gave you as an example. In the last part for the, the dual career, what is their commitment? Deanne, I'm, I'm gonna call on you to share. Um, Deanne sent me one today uh, in regards to a weekly report. And yeah. of course the common one, it, the numbers didn't add up. He, he's got a dual career guy who, look, Two days. I'll take two days. He was going to prospect six hours. Awesome. Um, but he was only going to get three contacts in. Yeah. But then um, all the other numbers is like what you want to see. Dan, you want to share? Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> funny because I we talked about this at the Lashes Men team meeting. I was like, oh, good thing we haven't done that yet. And I've been trying to put more of the at least that piece of paperwork in his hands. And we were in a bit of a rush yesterday. So uh, it was a bona fide mistake because I was like, man, have I been doing that the whole time? And I went and looked back at it. And I was like, no, we've been good. It was just this one time. But um, yeah, and, making and, sure and that makes sense. And honestly, before I sent it, I should have looked at it a little clearer. <laughs> like I actually re reviewed it. I realized I didn't send it yesterday. So I was in a, again, a rush before I started prospecting this right. morning. But at the end of the day, what Darwin's getting at is really important they have to make sense if they don't make sense how do we hold people accountable if we can't even read it that and that's the big key so dan stay with me because i um you're doing a great job um you need to look at those reports because it it, it can't be great thank you and then uh let's talk about your week this is about the next week we're actually going to be also um so pull out the one that they had last week and say, okay, you said you were going to work two days. Did you get those two days in? Great. Um, you said you were going to get 30 contacts. How'd you do with that? Only 20? What was the issue to that? Th this is how your meeting should go. So you only got 20. What happened? What held you back from getting the 30? Where can I help you with that? All right, great. So 30, you're going to get uh, three leads you're going to establish. I, I like that. How did you do last week? And, and by the way, their business plan probably won't change much. It shouldn't because they've done the goal projector. 
Okay. And if anybody's gone goal projector, I'm not familiar with that. Um, those of you on camera, how many are not familiar with the goal projector? Okay. One, two. All right. Only two of you. Everybody else is good with it. Cool. All right. Um, so guys, if uh, you'll remind me, um, we'll, uh, we'll do a session on the goal projector, but coming up first of January, when we have the new speed board or not new, but updated speed board, it'll be one of the first things that they do once they have access to 21 online or my CV desk. It'll be one of the first things that they have to accomplish. If it's not at the first, the like first checkbox on day two or three, it will be there. Because if we don't know what they need to make to get what they want, it's going to be hard to coach them. So that would be the other part is break down that. So Dan, um, been mentoring now for how long? Um, I think I got Chad at I believe we're two months in now. Yeah, yeah it'll, be, it'll be two months in. Actually, two months, like, I guess the first week or two is always going to be, like, the speed board stuff. So it's like, I with Chad, I decided I'm not going to dump everything on him because he's going to forget it all anyways. But, yeah, about two months now, and he's okay. So in the office. Now here's, here, the, one of the things I'd like you to do, wh how have you been working with him? Great question. Um, we actually opened up a spot for him in my office so he gets to sit with me when he is when he does come in. Wednesdays and Fridays are our days together where we prospect and then um, he honestly wait, sets wait, him up. A wait, you, wait, wait. He's in your office. We come together and we prospect. Well, yeah, we just yeah in the same environment, same room. Yeah, I just I lead by example. I'm usually. I'm usually in here before nine. He's usually a little five minutes late, but in the grand scheme of things, if he's coming in and for the two hours doing it and actually getting results out of it, I mean, five minutes, I'm not going to bust his chops over it. He is setting appointments. He's honestly setting so many appointments to where I can't go with him on all of them. And his first listing that he got was an appointment. He first appointment he could ever go on. I had a bunch of, I had appointment at the same time and he, Went and closed it on himself yesterday. I was driving to my barber and he's like, Hey, can you go over my listing presentation with me? I said, All right, let's do it over the phone. And he did a good job. I said, You got a little bit of mouth vomit, but that, that's to be expected with you being new. And uh, he's doing really well. A lot of what I've done is kind of just get out of his way. Don't. And, and yet, I, what do you think one of the biggest things that you do that has him taking the action and getting the results that he is? Um, we had a tough conversation after the first month of him and I working together. And I told him that where you're lacking is your initiative. And I said, if you're going to want to, because he's a painter, I said, well, next time you're painting that house, because you don't want to work your, your other job anymore. So when your arm starts hurting right here, because I've cut all my life, I said, remember, don't hurt that bad picking this phone up. I said, you know, when you're up on scaffolding painting and you you come home and you're covered in paint. I said, you don't have to come home looking, <laughs> looking like you painted houses. I says, use that as your motivation. And I says, you should feel bad about your not having the initiative to do that. I said, feel bad about it, but don't dwell on it. Take it, realize there's an issue, move past it and just keep pushing forward. And a lot of it just comes down to is I got out of his way instead of like on the uh, mentor reports, like, what do you think your mentee needs help with? Oftentimes, like, because him and I go over that, I don't secretly write it down. I tell them right then and there, like, Chad, I don't have a whole lot to tell you. Like, you're in here, you're making the calls. I mean, he beat me last week with getting to the office. I think he did more phone calls than me. But um, just getting out of his way and not treating him like he's an employee or, you know, and honestly letting them kind of figure some things out for themselves. Like, no one's going to understand how bad a situation is if you always save them from it. Like, near death is only scary because you were near death and if i explained my near death, death scenario i was like i saved you from that you're not going to appreciate what happened because i didn't let it happen to you and you kind of just have to again get out of their way that's what i've been telling her in the office is get out your mentee's way if he's doing it or she's doing it just let them do it and be there just be there with them don't correct them on everything he might have a phone call behind me that's like i would have closed here but I'm not him and what he's doing is working for him. So when he decides to close is when that's perfect for him. I just got to give him the tools like, here's how you complete the job. And as long as the job gets completed, I mean, I think he's doing pretty, 
pretty damn well. And and so I think there's a, a, a huge key um, because there's some wisdom that he's given as he's going through and working with this person. Um, but he's also setting the example. Now, uh, for somebody like Karina or Stephanie, uh, because I know the volume that you guys are at, um, that can be difficult. Um, and it might be an additional commitment to where it's like, look, I can't sit there with you for three hours because I don't have three hours of time to prospect. Um, I know Karina, yours, yours is similar to what Don Hendricks will do, where it's, uh, I'm driving from one appointment to another one and I drive by something that makes me think of somebody and I'll pick up the phone and I'm going to call them. Well, unless if they're with me, they won't ever see that. They won't see me doing the things that we're telling them that they need to do because they can't do what we do and still do five to $10 million. So, they have to do the things that are very basic. So to that, Darwin, what I did, uh, and I started doing this um, just last week, again, after your meeting, um, I have been sending Rebecca in the morning, what does my day look like? And in the evening, what did, how did my day turn out? And they never match. You guys all know, they never, your husband, my husband asks me, so what do you got going today? I'll tell him at night, oh, this happened, it never matches, right? So she likes that because I'll tell her, you know, I have showings here, I have a listing appointment, I have this, I have that. Do you wanna meet me? Yeah, no, can't, whatever. Um, and then at the end of the day, this is how my day went. It's 9.30 at night, I'm writing an offer or it's 9.30 at night, I'm putting my feet up and having a glass of wine. Whatever your day looked like, let them feel what that's like. And that sometimes will create the hunger like, oh, I want that because this is what you get. Now, obviously the years in the business, most of my business is repeat and referral, but I still drive by a for sale by owner in my neighborhood, snap a picture and go to them that night. And I let her know that, that I do that. No, I don't sit for three hours in cold call, but I used to. So, you know, you have to do what you have to do to get to where you want to be. You know, it reminds me of Glenda LaGroy. Yeah. And right. So yep. the, those gold agents who know Glenda, um, she's, I saw her for the first time after we, we came together, the merge between the two. And she, I just talked to her cause I hadn't seen her 20 years. Um, but she said, you know, look, all I did every day as I was unemployed, I get up, I go to the office, I talk to people. Mm -hmm. And that was, she, she made it that simple, but it was that basic understanding and, and viewpoint that I'm unemployed. I've got to go find interviews. Uh, and I can remember back in the day, she was doing 20 plus million, right? If I remember correctly, it was, she was 20, 24. Oh, she yeah. was up there before the days of where our prices are at now uh, or where they were even two years ago when we, you know, totally recovered, but no wonder, or if you will, what I call the matriarch of our company, uh, HRC, Darlene Hendricks. I had her on a panel and she said, what well, you, and for those who know Darlene, just sweet as sweet and caring as could be. She just said, well, you know, all I do is to make sure I talk to five people a day and I ask a real simple question. Who do you know who needs to buy or sell real estate? And she said, and I may go to the longest line at the grocery store, not the short one, just simply so I can finish talking to the five people. And it, it's ridiculous how simple it is. Karina, were you yeah. going to add? Yeah, um, just real quick, and I apologize for taking up so much time, but- Oh, no, um, no, our, you're great. Our, just our recent ELC event. Uh, real quick, I was standing there talking to Chris. The server came over, asked me for what I'd like to have to drink. And I ordered a cocktail, not realizing this was just beer and wine, and I ordered a vodka soda. She went and got it. She brought it to me. And later she came to me, she said, I'm really sorry. I'm going to pay for it out of my pocket but your drink wasn't included as part of the party. So that isn't going to happen. 
So I talked to her afterwards. I gave her the money along with a nice tip and my business card. She called me two days later and thanked me for the tip. And I said, do you by any chance know anybody that might be looking for real estate or some real estate help? She goes, my fiance and I are looking for a house in Farmington Hills and we don't have a real estate agent. Guess who was in Farmington Hills yesterday showing houses? All because of vodka and soda. <laughs> All because I gave her my card. Like, like you said, every opportunity, you have to let people know what you do. She knew we were all real estate agents. And you know what? You give yourself credit too for having the kind and giving heart. I mean, because that's a big part of it. And Stephanie, I'm, I'm sorry, I got a call on you because she's going to you know, tell everybody. And you had a story you might know the one I'm thinking of up north in a hot tub. <laughs> I, so you, you got to share this because it, guys, we've got to teach everybody that everywhere you go, there's an opportunity. Well, uh, if you've ever met me, you know what I look like and I will be dead before you ever see me in a swimming suit. It's not going to happen. We're up north on vacation. Um, Mackinac city or whatever, St. Ignace. And, um, I got, I was determined to sit in that hot tub. So I went and got in the hot tub at the hotel. Um, and there were these kind of burly guys there. Um, well, I'm Stephanie. So I talked to everybody. So I struck up a conversation. Um, it's somebody who builds, I don't know, um, stages for concerts all over the place. But this guy, they they can be from all over the country. This guy happened to be from Flint and he wants to buy a home. So I was in my swimsuit, not looking good. I looked a hot mess. I didn't care. He didn't care. Um, and now he wants to buy a, a home. So you, you never know. You got to step out of your comfort zone. I wasn't going to get in the hot tub. I didn't want people to see me in my lovely swimsuit, but I didn't care. I just did it. And, you know, now I've got someone to work with. So there you go. That's awesome. It, it, it just, it brought that whole thing together. Um, so good stuff. I, let me remind also our goals. So when you work with someone, remind them our goal. And I, I'm working on changing a mindset for managers and mentors. We can't go with what we know the industry is. We cannot go with what we know our own personal experience is. We've got to go with what we know is possible. So I've got to get everybody to believe what is possible. And that is our goals then for somebody joining our company would be that they have their first signed contract within 30 days. Now that would be a new listing or a buyer agency contract, because really, if we're doing this right, we find a buyer who's committed to us, let's commit them in writing because we should have an agency disclosure and an agency contract with that buyer. So when we talk about having a contract within the first 30 days, that's really what we're talking about. Then we're talking about getting at least two listings and two closings within 90 days so that graduation can occur. So we need to have six things so that they could graduate within 90 days with a minimum of two listings or two closings. So they could have two closings and four listings. They could have two buyers that have closed and taken four listings. They could have closed the two listings and two buyers they'd have six. So our goal is to have them graduate within 90 days. The, the part where it's, I've got to get us past is again, what we're used to in going, what could be? Because if we really look at Speedboard and they did exactly 100% the daily activity is there any reason that they couldn't do that? I'm not saying that everybody would do it, but is there any reason that if somebody actually jumped on the phone 
and talked to 10% of their sphere of influence on the second day they were with us. In the following day, they talked to another 10% so that within 10 days of working, they will have talked to everybody in their sphere of influence. Is there anything that would keep them from getting that first contract in the 30 days? If they didn't have a sphere of influence. And that would be the one in which case, um, where is, yes, Lisa, can you share about someone who everybody should be meeting mm -hmm. next week? You, you need to know that this is something that happened. So she's your agent, right? Erin? Yes. Yeah. Yep, she is. She didn't have a sphere at all. Um, she came here from Louisiana and um, she had a really great mentor. Nicole was her mentor um, and she just busted her buns and worked hard and talked to as many people as she could and went crazy. How, how is she for the year? I believe about four or five. In her first year. Yep. So when, when people throw out, I don't know anybody, I just moved here. Know that we have, and by the way, I, I would not be afraid to pick up a phone and call Lisa and say, Lisa, who's that person that you had? And she'll say, well, here's Aaron, here's her number. And I would just about bet that Aaron would be more than happy to share with this person who goes like, Dan, what you're talking about, um, I have no sphere of influence. Well, look, it's a reasonable excuse, but it's still an excuse. And there's one way to get past it. Go talk to more people. What else do you have to do? And, and Aaron, by the way, is going to be at Ignite next week. And we'll be sharing, uh, let's see, she is on the marketing and promoting yourself, uh, which will be our third breakout, and I call it breakout, but a panel session uh, during our general afternoon general session. So Aaron will be there and sharing. So if you've got a mentee, um, who, they, they need to be there because there's going to be lots of opportunities to learn from so many different people. Matter of fact, we've got, what, 5, 10, 13. We've got 18 agents that they're going to hear from over two hours. Can you and, and So it's not, it's not Darwin up there and going, yeah, it's just Darwin saying the same thing again. It's 18 agents who are out there doing the business. Uh, but Aaron's a great one from that aspect of, well, I don't have any sphere of influence. Well, then great. If you don't know people, what's the only other place that you can go? All the people that you don't know. So where do you find people you don't know? Everywhere. So sometimes I think, you know, Dan, I, I think you just got it. It's really simple. You just go see people wherever they are and you talk real estate. So that's, that is, uh, you know, when people say it, look, I get it. It's a reasonable excuse, but do you want to do real estate or don't you? Then go talk to people, hold open houses, do the things where people will come to you, but you got to work and you got to work your tail off. And we got to let them know, honestly, I mean, good golly. I mean, Karina, how many hours a week do you work? You can't, if I calculated what I make hourly, <laughs> I'd go get a job at McDonald's. <laughs> uh oh, maybe I need to start coaching you or something. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, because we do, we put in crazy hours. We're, we're on vacation. We're working. I mean, I'm that way. Yep. You know, yep. you're, it, it's 11 o'clock at night, you're sending over an offer, you're texting another agent, it's weekends, it's holidays, it's 
I mean, I've, I've sold and listed houses every holiday of the year, every single holiday I have been on either a listing appointment or a sale, but so, I also know, enjoy a very, I'm blessed to enjoy a very comfortable life. So we always say the biggest benefits of real estate, freedom, flexibility, and the promise mm -hmm. of untold wealth. Yeah. But if I have the untold wealth, well, look, yeah, I'm going to work a lot to have that. And it will also still provide me freedom and flexibility while interfering with the freedom and the flexibility. It's how well can I control it? And you need a big support so, system around you. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so guys, uh, again, the goals, we want you to have a signed contract within 30 days. I want you to graduate within 90s. I would go back, Stephanie, to your original question, which applies to everyone. They have to commit to what it is that they want, and we have to constantly remind them of what they want. Uh, Dan, you, you threw out a great part that is a reminder. Most people are mo motivated by moving away from pain. That's what you created. You reminded him of what he wants. But what it was, it was moving him away from the pain that he's currently experienced that he doesn't want. It isn't that he wants to get into real estate as much as it probably is. I don't want to do this thinking job of painting anymore. And, and remind people, if, if you keep going at the rate that you're going, will that move you out of painting or back to it? We have to let them realize the facts and at some point coach them out of the business. So that's a big part. Um, oh, one other thing on the dual career I made a note of. Essentially, when you look at Speedboard, day one for a dual career is probably day one and two. Day two is three and four. And as I've been talking about this, I would suggest that you might even print out. Now, they still need the thumb drive and the actual digital part of Speedboard, but maybe even print it out so that they know day one is one and two, two is three and four, three is five and six. But if you're dual career, you just put in eight to nine hours at that one job how many are you going to give me and i'm expecting three to four now if that's not five days a week great then what are you going to commit to during the weekend and how many hours i want to know but you've got to take a look at it by the end of the week you got day one day two as a minimum completed yeah. and preferably day three in the first week because it's a six day work week is the way that that's set up so that'll help you also but put the expectation as uh into their heads what is that expectation uh know that we're constantly working with the managers helping to get in that weekly meeting uh, I will tell you having stepped back into the office Brenda and I are realizing the difficulty of that as a manager but we're also going there's no excuses we've got to be able to make that happen um i i really don't have anything else is there anything in 30 seconds that somebody wants to address guys i appreciate you i appreciate what you do um, I know it's the aspect of just giving back. And as I always put it, you can never put a dollar amount on watching somebody else succeed. Or when we get to an awards and I can go, that's mine. She's mine. He's mine. And knowing that we played this little bitty part in their success. And that's what it's all about. So I appreciate you guys. Um, hope to see all of you next week at Ignite. Um, push upon everybody else in the office to make sure that they get there there's again 18 people participating who are your peers in what's coming up what uh, can we learn so i will see you then uh and we'll be back together in another month
Have a great one.